companies are already giving up on short-form content. Last month, Meta announced that they will stop offering bonuses to short-form creators. Why, you ask? Well, it turns out that pushing short-form content actually loses Meta money. Here's the thing, while Instagram Reels have exploded in popularity, they're not exactly stealing market share away from TikTok. Rather, because people do both. Like most people that have TikTok probably have Instagram too. It's stealing market share away from themselves. Instead of scrolling through pictures or the newsfeed on Instagram, people are now scrolling through Reels. This doesn't sound like a big deal until you consider that Reels are substantially less profitable than Instagram's other products. In fact, according to Zuckerberg himself, people switching to Reels is costing the company $500 million every single quarter or $2 billion every year. And the most- Well, fuck. We gotta turn that off. The ironic part is that this entire time, Meta had been paying creators to make Reels. So really, they were paying it to lose revenue. No wonder they stopped. Yeah, but smart. it's not just Meta who's pivoting away from short form content either. TikTok themselves are very much trying to move away. In fact, they've been aggressively increasing their max video length. That's What's one thing I noticed. Remember that one fucking angry middle-aged guy about politics that yells all the time? I was watching one of his TikTok videos and it was like, man, this is going on for way more than like a minute. This dude just is just going off. No, it wasn't Destiny or Hassan. It was another guy. Yeah. Started at 15 seconds. So it seems like they're having longer video to three too. Minutes to now 10 minutes. TikTok has even been experimenting with landscape mode on Android. So TikTok is very much headed towards the direction of becoming the YouTube where people don't search. Also, it's not like people search all that much on YouTube anyway. Well, it also Look makes it way easier for people because a lot of people don't know what they want to see. And it sounds really stupid, but it's true. Most people are so dumb, so indecisive, so scatterbrained, so distracted that like they don't want to think about what they want to see. They just want somebody to give it to them. That's it. Most of the time, you just use the homepage to find videos. But what happened? Why are all these companies pivoting away from shorts? Wasn't shorts the new medium due to ever decreasing attention spans and the need for constant stimulation? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that the answer is no. While short form content is great at garnering a lot of attention in the short term, it's not exactly the best model for companies or audiences long term. Instead I think that's definitely true. I don't know how many times I see people who are really popular on TikTok and then outside of TikTok, literally nobody cares about them. But they can have like 7 million followers on TikTok. Instagram and YouTube are starting to realize that they invested way too much money on a low ROI fad. And TikTok is fighting hard to not become the next line. So here's why companies got short form content wrong and why they're already backing off. Unloyal creators, uh oh. All successful creator driven platforms need a strong base of creators. This is why platforms like YouTube and Spotify have even turned to offering exclusivity deals like it's NFL football or something. That's crazy. They gave Joe Rogan over $200 million. If I ever see him because he's in Austin, I'm going to ask him to buy me something. So it would be quite an issue if these platforms were struggling to grow a creator base. And that's, that's very much the case with short form content. This isn't to say that TikTok and Reels aren't able to garner a bunch of creators, because there's no shortage of that. But what there is a shortage of is loyal short-form creators. Here's the thing, 9 times out of 10, people don't start posting short-form content because that's what they truly want to do. Rather, creators start posting short-form content because they see opportunity, they see a- I see a lot of people that do this. Where, like, they don't even like making TikToks or anything like that, but they do it because they think they have to. Where, like, this is the real solution, okay? Is, like, if you go on TikTok and you search Asmongold, there's a lot of people on TikTok that are making videos of me. And some of them have, like, millions of views. So I don't need to make content for TikTok. Somebody else can make the content. They can fucking make money off of it. Who gives a shit? And then they just cut it down and make it accessible for a TikTok audience. It's that simple. 
gold rush. Most creators never find gold, but even those who do don't want to reinvest the profits into mining for more. It's simply too risky. Rather, what they want to do is sell the gold and start a stable business. In other words, they want to switch to long-form content. Much of this attitude can actually be explained by the algorithms used to promote short-form content. Your follower count on short-form content really means nothing. This is why it's such a gold rush. If you start posting today, you have as good of a chance of posting a viral video as someone with 10 million followers. Sure. Actually, I take that back. If a creator has that many followers, they're probably pretty good at making viral content. But that's, the point is that the pivotal factor is the content itself, not the follower count. Well, this is great for- yeah, I think that's definitely true. And it is good for discoverability to make short form content. I just don't think that like, I think there's a lot of people that try to do things that they don't want to do. Whenever you make content, it's always good to, uh, you know, like yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's interplay here. But in general, whenever you're doing something that you don't want to do, that's a bad thing. You creators, it's absolute garbage when it comes to longevity. Creators are forced to always keep up with the latest trends and to put up something that can go viral instead of creating content that's actually impactful and meaningful. This yeah. is why you see so many TikTok stars that rise out of nowhere and then disappear faster than they blew up. Well, here's we the real reason, okay? Is that the way that I judge if content is good or not is if I think about it after the content is over. It's very hard for like an eight second video for it to be something that I think about after the video is over. But if it is, then I consider it good. Recently, it's the same with streams. Like if I watch a stream and I think about that stream a day later, I know it was a good stream. If I watch a video and I think about it way later, I know it was a good video. An Iraq video where he trapped 25 TikTokers inside his house. Uh -oh. Many of these creators had millions, if not tens of millions of followers. That's a lot. So I don't know if it's just me, but I had no idea who any of these people were. Let me know down below if you were in the same boat. But anyway, even creators who enjoy making short form content want to switch to long form because it's simply the smarter business decision. That right there covers yeah, basically- see, I don't even, oh, I, I do have a TikTok account. It's a private account because I just, I mean, what do you guys think I use TikTok for, right? And, and, and so like, I, I, I don't, I, why would I upload anything on the TikTok? Nothing, there's nothing, there's no reason. 90% of short form creators, the other 10% are actually already long form creators. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm guilty of this as well. Yeah, sure. A lot of creators have figured that they might as well try adapting their regular long form content to short form. The mentality is usually, if it works, great. If it doesn't, not a big deal. That's exactly my outlook, yeah. So little to say, no creator on TikTok, Instagram Reels, or YouTube Shorts is really loyal to said platform. No. For all of them. Well, nobody from... really is to any platform. They're always going to go where they're going to get the most viewers. That's Content just how it is. is really just a springboard to garner attention or a medium to expand their existing long form content. So when you're trying to run a creator driven platform with such people, well, let's just say it's difficult to say the least. But building yeah, up a course. loyal creator base is just the first of these platforms worries. Yes to advertisers, oh shit. That's what really matters. Not only do these platforms have to deal with flaky creators, but they also have to deal with flaky advertisers. The reality is that no advertiser really wants to advertise on short form content. This isn't to say that short form advertising well, is because people it doesn't convert that well. It's not about like, oh, what the type of content is. It's like advertisers don't probably don't really give that much of a fuck about that. Uh, it's just that the people that watch this kind of stuff don't spend this kind of money. It's just that simple. Is always ineffective. Beheza, for example, has shown time and time again that short form advertising is not only effective, but can be super lucrative. But with that being said, Shorts just don't vibe with most brands. I mean, can you imagine GE making a TikTok ad about the refrigerators or Intel? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just like, what do you, because again, 
the audience of people that are that are consuming short form content are usually teenagers with ADD. They don't have any money. Like, what are you going to advertise to them? Like fidget spinners? What the fuck? Can you TikTok ad about the new i9 processor? It just doesn't yeah, feel right. Yeah, that, it's an a advertisement about an i9 processor. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. It's not only kids, though? No, it's not. You're right. But let's not be naive. And uh, TikTok is, is, is mainly like one of the biggest platforms for young people. And the truth is, young people don't have a lot of fucking money. Right. Now, some legacy companies are able to pull it off. A notable example that comes to mind is Coca-Cola. But yeah, sure, because everybody knows about Coca-Cola. It's, a, it's awareness marketing. It's a completely different type of marketing. Uh, it's, it's not a, uh, everybody's had Coca-Cola before. So, like, you, you, at that point, like an i9, you need to sell a functionality. With Coca-Cola, you need to sell an idea. It's easier to do that. Sure. You can advertise ideology. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. But, like, it, like, an advertisement for an ideology isn't very good if it's so short that people can't really form an, an opinion about it. Just because they're able to make effective ads doesn't mean that they want to advertise on these platforms. The reality is that in most cases, these companies just don't want to associate with short form content because they see it as a risk. I'm sure you're familiar with how companies don't want to associate with the following content on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Well, newsflash, this is basically the entirety of TikTok. Yes, but it is. Let's even put that aside. That's why Let it's popular. Say you're okay with advertising next to this type of content. You still have the challenge of running a successful ad campaign. While TikTok can be great for promoting products like this, it's not exactly great when it comes to building general brand awareness and visibility. Because people don't give a shit about it. That's why. Yeah, it's a completely different type of uh, completely different type of audience. And times when companies like Apple or Coca-Cola put out an ad, they're not trying to get you to buy their product. They don't even want you to click on the ad or buy on the spot. Rather, they it's just want marketing. to build up their yeah. brand of presence. This is a like Geico spends like a million or a billion dollars a year just to be synonymous with car insurance. Uh, there's a lot of awareness marketing that that happens, and I think like people say, "Oh, why does Coca-Cola needs ads? Need ads? Everybody knows who they are. That's why Coca-Cola needs ads." only possible on YouTube given that viewers are forced to watch for 5 or 15 seconds. But on TikTok, if an ad doesn't pique the viewer's interest within mm -hmm. 0.2 seconds, they're gonna swipe up. Jesus. This means that advertisers are forced to include some sort of a gimmicky hook, which again, just doesn't fit with their brand image. And if you well, don't it's also like advertising next to stuff like this, especially doing an advertising campaign with a specific creator, most creators on TikTok Every single one of their videos doesn't blow up, but they have some videos that blow up and then uh, they delete the ones that don't. So it looks like every video they have blows up. So like you don't have that same level of consistency. If me, you can just look at the numbers. For my usual videos, I generally get an ad rate of four to five dollars per thousand views. All right. For shorts, however, I generally get an ad rate of five cents per thousand views. Ooh. This basically indicates that advertisers are 100 times less likely to bid on short form ad slots as opposed to long form ad slots. That is nuts. It also gives a lot more context as to why creators want to switch to long form content so badly. The reality is that if you want to make a living off of short form content. Well, it's also that short form content doesn't build any form of a, uh, it, it doesn't build any form of loyalty. Like people are not loyal to most short form content creators. The moment that person stops making content, they just don't show up in that guy's algorithm and then you never think about him again. Whereas like long form content, bro, people keep making videos about where is Pilav? Where is he? Where did he go? And he's been gone for a whole year and they're still making videos about still thinking about him. That's what I'm trying to get at. And, and like, I think with different creators, like you guys probably know other examples too. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm back. 
you have to pull in a brain dead amount of views every single month. To make just $5,000 per month, for example, you have to pull in 100 million views. Let me phrase that in a different way. You have to reach one eighth of the entire- well, that, That's the reason why that you have to get 100 million views is, and, and this is also why a lot of these creators, they either sell a product or they have like individual brand deals that they work out with the brand. Because like, yeah, just traditional advertising, like ad space on a video, not very good. Our world population every single year just to make 60 grand. At least creators have the option to do direct brand deals or promote their own products. Yeah, there you go. For these platforms, on the other hand, the only way they make money is through these ads. So even with their ridiculous scale, yeah, it's, it's very good just point. not all that profitable. So it's no wonder why Meta is losing $2 billion every single year by pushing short form content. A waning audience. Uh-oh, are all the middle schoolers getting to high school? <laughs> this isn't good. While unloyal creators and hesitant advertisers are no doubt a pain in the neck, at least there's some hope with that. As more modern companies start advertising on short-form platforms, ad rates should go up, which should make creating short-form more worthwhile for platforms and Yeah, I'm sure. I think that advertisers will find, bro, like, they're at, like it's their job to find a way to get people to buy their stuff. They'll figure out a way to make short-form content make money. But something that these platforms can't recover from is a waning audience. The truth is that people are getting tired of predictable TikTok content, and the main reason for this is that these types of videos rarely have any substance. Every it's also because it's a trend. And the thing is, this is what I said before, with, with content that appeals to kids. If you make content that appeals to kids, or your content is for kids, it has a lifespan. And it is a short lifespan. It will be very successful, and then it will not be. Single video is based around a thirst trap or some sort of gimmick, yes. but rarely do they have any sort of real takeaway or message. This is why people forget about most shorts within two minutes of watching it. It feels good in the moment, but the feeling doesn't last long. But wait a minute, isn't people's attention spans getting crushed by these platforms? Well, to be honest, I think this effect is vastly overstated. TikTok is basically like ice cream. People like eating ice cream. They may even eat it on a daily basis. But just because a person eats ice cream, it doesn't mean that they're suddenly going to stop eating steak or pizza. That's true. Most days I eat ice cream and steak. And some days I eat ice cream, steak, and pizza on the same day. You know what you call those days? Good days or burgers or real food in general. In fact, if you had the option of only consuming ice cream or pizza, I'm pretty sure that virtually everyone will choose pizza. Looking back at uh, the pandemic- Wait, 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 what, what? I'm pretty sure that- In fact, if you had the option of only consuming ice cream or pizza- Oh, well, yeah, 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 okay. I thought, I thought steak was on the menu there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely pizza. I'm pretty sure that virtually everyone will choose pizza. Yeah. Looking true. back, the pandemic forced most people to stay at home, which led to them snacking away more than usual. But as people return to their normal lives, their social media diet is also returning to real food, and this is already evident in the stats. In 2021, TikTok rose to be the most popular domain in the entire world. Holy shit, but I didn't know that. in 2022, TikTok fell down to number three as Google and Facebook regained their leads. No, it's no and surprise. looking forward, it seems how the fuck is Facebook so high up there? What the fuck? Like Facebook? Who the fuck gets on Facebook? There's so many... Bro, like... I don't even... Like, some, I will get on Facebook sometimes. Right? I will. But damn. Man, that shit stresses me out. Like I see, so I, I told you guys about this, right? I went and I saw some middle-aged mom posting some stupid fucking meme on Facebook, and I said, "Wait a minute, who is that?" 
And then I realized that middle-aged mom was a girl that I thought was hot when we were in high school. I had to lay down. I'm still fucked up about that. That was two years ago. Like this trend will only continue as TikTok is looking more and more like Vine. I know that most of you just remember Vine as a big failure, but Vine was actually super popular for a period of time. Yeah, it was. In fact, at the end of 2015, Vine had as many as 200 million users. Why did Vine fail then, you ask? Well, you can take it from the horse's mouth itself. Twitter, the parent company of Vine, mm -hmm. was unable and or unwilling to pay the creators that made the platform so popular in the first place. Uh, this was actually Jack Dorsey's biggest regret. But what is TikTok doing? Well, they're unable and or unwilling to pay the creators that made their platform so big. And I don't think they can really pay them that much money. It's going to be hard to do that. As audiences and creators naturally shift back to Facebook and YouTube, these platforms see less of a reason to be so aggressive when it comes to promoting shorts. I think that shorts will end, always be popular. It's not surprising why companies are backing I mean, shorts were popular before TikTok. ...away from short-form content. The reality is that creators are just using shorts as a springboard. Advertisers yeah. don't want to get involved, and audiences are by no means ditching long-form content. This isn't to say that TikTok is going to die like Vine, but what has become abundantly clear is that short-form content is simply an addition to long-form content, not a replacement like the media often suggests. That's what I do, yeah. It's like all my short-form content is just simply people that cut down my long-form content and they put it on TikTok or on YouTube Shorts or on Asmongold Clips. It's done. So Meta and YouTube no longer feel threatened by TikTok. If anything, it's actually TikTok that strives to be more like Meta and YouTube so that they don't end up like Vine. Combine this with the recession and it simply makes no sense to bet so much on a historically flaky medium. And that's why companies are already giving up and pulling back on short form content. Well, that's the thing, right? It's like kids always go from one platform to another. Like, at the beginning, it was like uh, fucking MySpace and My Yearbook. Then people moved over to Facebook. And then they moved over to, like, Instagram and Twitter. And, like, let's see, now, you know, there's TikTok. Like, there's always going to aim. Well, yeah, aim is too. Like, and there's, like, Bebo as well. Bebo, that was, like, mainly for people in the UK, I think. Oh, Snapchat, yeah. I guess Snapchat was after that, uh, after, I guess, Twitter. And let's see, I, I don't know what they, what kids get on now because I'm not a fucking kid. I have no idea, but I think it's TikTok. Did you ever buy into the short form craze? Comment that down below. Tumblr. Also, drop yeah, a Tumblr. like if you're glad that Discord. short form content is dying. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest your video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one. That was a pretty fair video. Yeah, I do think that uh, that, that short-form content should be used to supplement long-form content. And yeah, it's definitely used to get people into watching long-form content rather than be the content itself. I think that's the best way to say it. My son's 16 and Snapchat is the communication choice for Arizona high schoolers. Well, I think one of the reasons why kids like Snapchat too is that it automatically deletes pictures and videos like uh and chats i mean that's a that's a big fucking reason why kids like snapchat absolutely it's like they want to send each other stupid shit it, it, it's not even also just like sexting and stuff like that it's they just simply they don't want to have their parents go back and read their messages like i never let my uh i, I never let my parents read any of my messages or anything like that uh, absolutely not. It's also just a funnier way to communicate. Yeah, sure. Deleted. Well, no, the cops can get a hold of your chat. Absolutely. I think there's like a thir I, the 30 day thing where they have to hold on to all the information. But what I'm saying is like, unless, like if you're 16, you're not really worried about the cops. You're worried about your parents, probably. Like there's some that are worried about the cops. Sure. But most of the time they're worried about their parents.
I mean, my friends used to send videos of us taking a shit. Yeah, and it's like if you send, if your parents find out that you and your friends were sending videos of each other taking a shit to each other, like they're not gonna, they're not gonna get it. They're not gonna see how funny that is. Like your parents or your mom's gonna be like, she's not gonna be like, wow, that's a good one, bro. That's good. That's funny. No, she's gonna be like, wow, Jimmy, it's time for you to go back to. We're gonna start going back to church this Sunday. And you're going to have to wear your suit. Yep, that's right. And you can't bring your phone. You're going to have to give your dad your phone. And that's it. So no wonder you want to have them deleting those fucking videos. That's the last thing you want to see. Where the cool moms are. Oh, my mom was, was cool as fuck, bro. Like, she was okay with us doing almost anything. Like, there were, there were some things. I remember whenever we moved upstairs into this room, because we used to be downstairs in my old room, she said, though, I have one rule. She says, you can drink up there. You can do drugs up there. I don't care. But don't you fucking let me see you pissing out that window. And I know that you and Cody and Jeff and, and Dylan and Austin and Eric and all of you, I, I fucking know that you thought about it. Don't you fucking do it. Because if you do it, it's against the law. The cops will get called and it's going to be a whole thing. And so we never pissed out the window. It never happened. Not even once. No, that was it. Everything else was totally fine. Are they pissing about? No, it's just disgusting, man. Yeah, just the sink? Absolutely not. Yeah, that was the only thing. She didn't care what else we did. It didn't matter at all. Did you have to stop someone from doing it? No. Because, like, whenever she told us, it was, like, it was so definitive. It was like, you do not do this. You can do anything else, but you do not do this. And nobody ever, ever questioned that. Yeah, you can do drugs and not piss out the window because it's against the law. Yeah, but like the logic is like if you're if you're getting high in this room, the the, the person walking down the street isn't gonna see that like you're getting high. They're not gonna be able to smell it probably, right? Because it's too far away. Uh, so but, like, if there's a dude with his dick out the window, everybody can see it because his dick's out the window. You see, see this? The, you see kind of how, how things come together here. Didn't you tell a story about throwing trash out the window? Yeah, we threw trash out the window all the time, but never dicks. Dicks never went out the window. Not a chance. That was the one thing. Everything else went out the window, just not that. 